The more you associate happiness with curiosity, the happier you'll be when your curiosity is satisfied. Welcome to the happy channel. It's the other skills. Shivra has escaped from Agra. And yes. from what I have understood about history, this pissed off Aurangzeb a lot. Yes. That, that it, he had escaped. Did. So Aurangzeb is a very key part of this episode because as you said in our first episode, in order to understand Shivrai better, you've got to understand Bacha Aurangzeb. Yes. So I'll let you take the story forward from whichever point you think is best. Yeah. So after the escape, Aurangzeb uh, sent thousands of um, uh, uh, horsemen in all the direction to capture any person or any group traveling with a small nine-year-old boy. Okay. But as all of us know, history, uh, little Shambhu Raja was left behind at Mathura because Shivrai knew that Aurangzeb will be surely looking at uh, father and son duo. Hmm. Many were captured, many were sent to Agra, many were flogged. Uh, and no, anybody, no religion, no, it, it was not uh, only Hindu father and son. There were Muslims, Christians, everybody was captured and sent to Agra for verification whether they are the same as they escaped. But where was uh, uh, Shambhaji Maharaj? He was left back in Mathura. Okay. Shambhaji Maharaj, like was... Shambhu Raja was left in Mathura. He was just nine years old. And okay. he was protected. He, wa he was left with, um, with the relatives of um, Moroji Pingli. Okay. In uh, Mathura. Okay. And they were very protective hmm. for Shambhu Raja. So, you know, uh, Shivrai was leaving behind a piece, uh, his, a piece, I wouldn't even say piece of his heart. His entire heart he was leaving behind in, at Mathura. Hmm. But he had to travel fast. You know, so from Mathura, if you see uh, the distance between Mathura to Pune, stone's throw, if you, as the crow flies. It is more than 1,000 kilometers, 1,200, 1,300 kilometers. But they, those days, there were no highways. Na? Mm. You had to climb the mountains, uh, you had to cross the rivers, and you needed papers to cross the rivers. No ferryman will take you unless you have those papers. Mm. They're like passports issued by the Mughal government. Nobody can cross the border. Mm. So it must have taken a long time. It must have been a tiring journey. So Shivra must have thought that it is impossible to travel this fast uh, without getting noticed along with a nine-year-old Shamburaji. Mm. So he was left at Mathura. So yeah. when, uh, Shambura, when Shivra reached um, Rajgad, mm. he declared that Shamburaji is dead. Mm. We have to do all his Kriya Karma. Why? Because then Aurangzeb will not search for Shamburaji. Mm. So that's how it was happening. Hmm. But what are the repercussions uh, of this escape? Now, Shivrai has escaped. He's safe in Raigad. Nobody can touch him. Later on, Shambhu Raja escaped, also reached Raigad. That itself is an enthralling story. Now, you know Ram Singh, who was Mirza Raja Jai Singh's son, who looked after Shivaji at Agra. Hmm. This Ram Singh, after the escape of Shivaji, was sent to Assam to fight. It's like a kind of a punishment. What Along, was happening in Assam? Assam, they were uh, rebels and then they were, um, you a know. Home, a home empire? A home empire, yeah. And they were, they were like those, they were tribes also, which I said, no, they were yeah. cannibalistic tribe, uh, tribes and they were cruel tribes. They could hack you to death. They were like jungle people. So it was always a punishment if you are sent on these frontiers by your Bacha. And mm. this was a punishment to Ram Singh because Shivrai had escaped. Just want to give a small piece of information here. The yeah. military personnel we've had on the show yeah. have always said that the Northeast was the most difficult place to go and fight. Yes. And they're saying that about the 90s and 2000s. Yes. So I can't imagine what it was 200, it was, 300 years yeah. ago. It was a watery, marshy land yeah. all over. My, my point of highlighting all these different aspects is that we have the Mughal Empire in the middle in yeah. and around Delhi and that whole northern belt. Yeah. And then under that, we've got the Maratha Empire. On the west, we've got the six. On the east, we've got the northeast. So yeah. I feel like Aurangzeb wasn't just kind of getting attacked by Shivra. There was a lot of people's eyes on yes. Aurangzeb and lots of people yes. wanted to kill him. Yes. So Teg Bahadur Singh actually fought for the Mughals in the beginning, along with Ram Singh in Assam. 
बट ही वॉज ऑफ अ थाट ही वॉज अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग पर्सन ही थाट इक्वेलिटी एंड जस्टिस आर द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट मोर देन एनीबडीज रिलीजन इक्वेलिटी एंड जस्टिस आर द मोस्ट इम्पॉर्टेंट थिंग्स फॉर ह्यूमन्स ओके सो वेन ही केम बैक फ्रॉम आसाम इन द अर्ली सिक्सटीन सेवेंटी अर्ली सेवेंटीज Uh, lot now this history is repeating a lot of pandits from kashmir came and met him and they said is it impossible for us to live in kashmir because uh, the uh, the the people aurangzeb's people are torturing us they are killing us and they are uh, forcing us to convert when he heard this when he heard this he changed his mind and he went against aurangzeb and revolt happened that revolt aurangzeb really cracked down on that revolt teg bahadur singh was captured in in 1675 or 1674 or 75 uh, april i think he was brought to chandni chowk and there were his uh, seven or eight of his uh, uh, loyal people in front of him they uh, aurangzeb ordered to kill them and one they say was thrown into a boiling oil in front of teg bahadur so that he changes his mind they asked him to convert he refused and then he was hacked to death limb by limb and this was uh, this is known guru govind singh his uh, son escaped this and then he was so fired by his father's um, uh, sacrifice that he uh, started khalsa that every one person in a sikh family will be devoted to army or a military person that's where i think the sikhs actually became a warrior class they became a warrior class see how one act of this a butterfly effect of aurangzeb's uh, fanaticism and bigot uh, he was a bigot and his fanaticism this is the result of that and then when uh, shivrai took over one fort after another and uh, he they even what they did shivrai did he also went into konkan and established see he is the only person i feel i don't know in history now who did not have a coast his jagir or his little swaraj when he said it did not have a coastal line but he dreamt of navy mm. what is the basic requirement for a navy a coast that itself he did not have so he had to acquire the coast who the coast or the west coast like konkan uh, the strip narrow strip that goes from mumbai till goa that was majorly controlled by adil shahi so what he did in this peace period after he came back and escaped from agra he tried to establish his rule in konkan okay he he knew his limitations what is the most important um, quality of a statesman that the state statesman must know his or her limitations how much they can push he knew uh, shivrai knew that he does not have enough strength because he was left to, now afterwards he took over uh, other forts also which were lost in purandar peace treaty he knew that he cannot push on the eastern side because when he pushes on the eastern or northern side northern side of his swaraj he will face the mughal eastern side of his swaraj he will face adil shah and where he will have to uh, fight pitched battles against their heavy duty cavalry and their heavy duty cavalry is very strong on the plains but that was not the case in konkan konkan is a very rough uh, land you know there are there are straight um, uh, rock faces hmm. and then in konkan itself hundreds and hundreds of rivers come from the mountains and join the sea so that entire area is very difficult to move so he concentrated on konkan he had to get uh, the coastal part he had to acquire ports he had to start building sea forts it is not just building ships where will he anchor his ships mm. so what happened so he started building he had already finished building sindhu durg durg because uh, siddhis uh, another this sindhu durg is answer to siddhis who were hold up in janjira so this janjira fort they had made it very strong 2000 siddhis 
the absolute mercenaries and pirates were holed up in that uh, Janjira fort. These are of African origin? Yes, Abyssinian and origin. Abyssinian. As the, are these the same Siddhis we find in Gujarat today? Mostly, yes. They're the same. Siddhis, sir, actually, sir. These are from the, uh, from the East uh, African countries. Got it. So, Shivrai has started building these forts and, uh, no, the, the sea fort he first acquired and he started shipbuilding activities. And then uh, he started, he had taken over the Mughal forts. Now it was time to show that I have, I have arrived. So what does, uh, he was not officially a king. He was still referred as a Bhumaiya, Jagirdar, by Aurangzeb and the likes of Shahs, the, the Sultanates, Sultanate kings. So Shivra wanted to show that I have arrived. Okay, a Hindu king has arrived. Well, how, what does he do? He plans a coronation. In, it, was, it happened in 1674. So, where does he have? He has now shifted from Rajgad to Fort Raigad. Why Raigad? It is at the edge of Jauli, a valley of Jauli, where Fort Pratapgad is also situated in uh, Jauli Valley which was taken, taken over by Shivrai from the Morids, mm. which we had discussed. Yeah. So, he, uh, he, he wants to make it grand. And no Hindu king had recently coronated himself. So, they had to invent the rituals and rites of the coronation. They had to search for the shlokas. And there was a, uh, there was a, a, a Brahmin called Gagabhat, who was Shivrai's uh, family, uh, con- they had family connections. And he w- is, was from Maharashtra, but he has settled in Varanasi, uh, Kashi. So he comes there, he invents all the rituals, he studies the old scriptures, and he creates a ceremony. And there, see, there are emblems of power. Huh? That only it was a prerogative of a bacha, Mughal bacha to use. What are the emblems of power? Uh, like a fish head, a small fish head, which means uh, the weak that need to be protected. A big fish head with teeth, that is the symbol of invaders. Then there are many like swastika, the symbol of swastika, that is suvastu, which is actually a blueprint of a fort. So, there are many emblems and no shaha, the sultanate uh, shahas could not use those emblems. This was the prerogative of Aurangzeb. But Shivrai used those emblems, created those emblems and used them uh, in his coronation ceremony. Okay. This entire thing is written by Henry Oxenden. Actually, my book starts from Henry Oxenden who was a British officer based in Mumbai then. Hmm. So, he was invited for the coronation. They carried the presents, then they went to Raigad, then they went to top and then they stayed there. Raigad is a huge, it has a huge kilometers long um, flat uh, table table on the uh, mountain of Rairi. What was happening in Mumbai at that time? Mumbai, the British were uh, ruling. Mumbai was uh, the bastion of the English people, the apolitical so-called. They had fortresses built and uh, they were trading. Okay, they were also helping Siddhis. Hmm. Now, what had happened on the coastal, there is Danda Rajapuri, that area in Konkan. All the Marathas were, you know, they're very vigil in that area. So, there is, I think, a kilometer of distance between um, the fort of Janjira and the coast, mainland, yeah. what you can call. So, they could not anchor their ships uh, in near the mainland because of the Marathas. The Siddhis could not do that. So, they had forced, literally forced the British that they will come to Mumbai and park their boats there. And the British had allowed it for some reason. Otherwise, the, the, the Siddhis would have troubled them also. But what these uh, Siddhis used to do, they used to anchor their ships near Mumbai and come to the mainland and trouble the Marathas and take their women and children for slave trade, take their produce. So, this was becoming a big 
problem in the konkan area for shivrai mm. so this is one and even mughal were uh, depending on the siddhis and the portuguese because they the ships sailing to makka were guarded by the siddhis and given by the portuguese or given by the siddhis so they were kind of very kind and nice to this siddhis they had uh, if they take the women and children from the coast what can we do that was their uh, mm. attitude mm. okay so so aurangzeb was like now when this coronation ceremony happened it must have hit aurangzeb really really hard really really hard so it is um, that time he started demolition of the temples you know in full swing and he also thought of reinstating jizya tax which was cancelled by akbar the the emperor akbar i'm not talking about his son akbar okay so shivrai knew that if um, uh, and there was and there were lot of liberal muslims also were killed by aurangzeb he just couldn't stand them there was a guy called nanga fakir who had hailed from armenia he was a jew and knew hebrew very well he scholar of hebrew he had converted a bible hebrew bible into farsi then he had turned into sufi um then he wanted to convert he wanted to study hinduism and he was studying upanishads but he never used to wear any clothes and he wanted he said that islam must be reformed it must be liberated from its shackles and thousands and thousands of liberals were following him in that but aurangzeb could not stand him he caught this samrat his name his uh, i think darga is still there somewhere in old delhi he was caught brought to the darbar and he was asked why do you say um, only half the kalma why don't you say the full kalma that says uh you know mohammed is the last paigambar this is not my perception of islam this is not my theory of islam it is what samrat said samrat said that not, nobody can be the last paigambar the the religion needs to evolve and i may be the last paigambar i am the scholar of uh, islamic scriptures i have read quran 100 times so i can reform it every religion needs to change with the changing world so aurangzeb uh, asked him why did you then he did not know what to say aurangzeb so he went into another line he said you kissed and hugged your disciple hindu disciple in public what was that relationship so you know what he was implying and on the based of that relationship percept perception of aurangzeb or convenience of uh, other mullahs a uh, samrat was hanged till death on at chandni chowk he okay. accused him of homosexuality yes <laughs> what was the case for homosexuality oh, back they, then it's absolutely no no in those days but of course what was happening in the harems what was happening with the eunuchs little boys we do not know but openly this was a big no no okay openly it's it's a it's entire thing is based on hypocrisy entire you know how some eunuch boys were used as sex slaves also one of the mansabdars aurangzeb's mansabdars had or akbar's mansabdars had 15000 eunuch boys in his harem and what were they used for i don't know i yeah, i can just guess you know so this samrat so shivrai knew if and when aurangzeb descends in south then uh, we will have to play pay heavy taxes my rayat will die my people will die and it's going to be a life uh, worth committing suicide i mean it's not even the battles just waking up every day knowing that there's some new exactly. issue that's happened i was telling my family that uh, you know even just running business is so glamorous when you think about it before you started no. and then every day there's a mental health battle if you're running a business correct and here we yes. aren't talking about a business we're talking about an empire empire yeah where there is death involved there's torture involved there are very brutal enemies there are multiple different enemies who banded together and you have to ensure that your people are happy and the economy is growing so it mustn't have been an easy life and no. somewhere it has to have taken a toll yes 
and also i will you know the my entire book is based on few lines which i have written myself it is like this now we say ahinsa i don't believe in that because this poem goes like this written by me when peace demands suffering and shame war remains the only option that is most humane mm. you know you have to fight to keep your people uh safe and at peace what so, is said about his demise shivaji so, maharaj what happened that time it is written in uh, uh, dr kamla gokhale's book also what has happened now imagine and i am also a woman so i understand that history part i think better than men may because i am a mother yeah i want my son uh, to be at the center of power i don't want my son, my son of my other shivrai's other wife mm. okay so what people say there is a conspiracy now look a shivrai comes to um, raigad he is all the time campaigning from some campaign he comes so now the situation is like this shivrai is at raigad he is ill and almost dying he doesn't know he's dying why uh, how much will nobody knows you know that you are going to just die after a short illness so the rajwaidya and all are invited that time on that uh, there uh, uh, the, the ministers have already arrived one by one there is this uh, pradhan moroji pingle then surnis who is a tax collector revenue minister anaji datto then there is uh, hiroji farzad the the man who uh, impersonated uh, shivrai and saved his life in at agra then there is soira rani then there is putala rani they say putala rani was at pachad but i feel she must have come to raigad that time i'm not sure okay they were all there now shivrai is sick and we do not know what conversation happened between there we don't know but bakhars right uh they write that they he said this he said that and it is it sounds very exaggerated anybody who is so ill cannot talk such long paragraphs and paragraphs you see according to me and he according to the english correspondence he vomited blood okay so we do not know what disease what that peptic ulcer burst or we have no idea or there was gallstone problem we no we don't know anything or typhoid so he just dies there where mm. now the situation is look uh, sambhu raja is at panhala okay he is he is there panhala he's come back from the mughal and he is at panhala here there is uh, the, there are his two queens basically one another sakwar queen is also there but was she was this sakwar bai sahib was she at jinji i'm not sure because one of her daughters were at jinji so i'm not who's, really who's sure. queen was she this shivrai shivrai has four queens or five queens okay. that time alive okay but main main queens were soira Ra rani sahib and putala rani sahib those were there at the fort why don't we hear about the other children that shivrai had only boys na that time importance of boys so soira rani sahib had a boy that's why she got she is so important in that and sai bai sahib who had sambhaji shambhu raje she is already dead Hmm. and uh, soira rani sahib is a queen consort during the coronation so she is very important so the situation is like this then who now the what the ministers many people say that soira rani sahib was completely innocent and was twisted by the ministers ministers who anaji datto somaji his brother somaji datto and um, uh, balaji auji the script uh, the, the the ones who write all the letters for shivrai and then morpan pingle they um, they instigated soira rani she was very bhola bhali bhola uh, very innocent and she the entire thing was twisted by the ministers but according to uh, research books my research based on uh, these books you know soira rani was also involved and she very much wanted her son to become the next um emperor em next uh, chhatrapati so what does they they do what do they do 
they close all the gates. She orders the closure of all the gates, incoming and outgoing crowd from Raigad, so that the, the news of Raja's death does not travel outside and does not reach Sambhaji's ears. Now, what they, what they, um, uh, what they plan is to quickly do not Manchaka Rohan, not Raja Bishak. Manchaka Rohan is little different. The, the Sihasan or the throne cannot be kept empty after a long time after the king is dead. So, king is dead and long live the king. Mm. Immediately, somebody has to sit on that um, throne. So, that is known as Manchaka Rohan. It's not a full-fledged coronation. So, quickly that coronation has to take place. And I feel, I feel that the, the ministers and Soira Rani Sahib both were equally responsible. See, what would have happened? These people were not some uh, cunning, uh, planning, useless guys. Annaji Datto and Moropan Pingle, they were the two wheels of the, uh, uh, of the Swaraj, which uh, Shivrai created. They were great men. Okay. And if, uh, if um, Annaji Datto had not started a new way of collecting uh, revenue, they could not have every full moon day salaries of 40,000 cavalrymen, 40,000 infantrymen, um, the, the fort uh, Shibandi, the, the, the fort um, defense, then civil servants had to be paid. That, that Shet Sara had to be collected and very wisely collected. And no force should be, should have, uh, Shivra never wanted uh, force to be applied on the farmers or the cultivators. Mm. So, all this was managed by Annaji Datto. Okay. And Moropan Pingle was not just, he, they were all warriors. Annaji Datto took over Panhala along with, um, Kao, I think, I don't know, Kondaji, another mm. Maratha. So what and happened? So the thing is, uh, the thing is, Hamid, Ham, Hamir Rao Mohite, who is supposed to be Soira Rani's brother, he's got, he also, he gets the wind of what's happening around. Hmm. Because he had to be told, he controls the army. Hai na? But what he sees there is the Praja, which is also written in the reference book, the Praja, Praja is the subjects, are extremely attached to Shamburaji. Not only he resembles the king, uh, the Shivraj, Shivrai, but he also is very good to them. He's very good to them. So they all are for Shamburaji. Then Hambira Mohote at the last moment, how he changes colors, how he rescues Shamburaji, and how Shamburaji is made the next Chhatrapati is another story. Mm. So TRS Clips has all sorts of videos and all sorts of playlists. Make sure you explore the channel by subscribing and heading to our homepage and reading through all the playlists.